Uh, this is a case of a physician who had an ischemic heart disease. He, in fact, uh, mis misunderstood uh, his chest pain. You see the uh, septum not contracting well, but this is the shell image. And you see how well the lateral wall is contracting, and the shell image shows that the uh, septum is not contracting. Especially when the window is not good, 3D can be very useful in such situations. This is a patient who had an apical aneurysm, the transthoracic uh, grayscale image is not very clear. But look at the shell image. The dyskinesia is very obvious. So uh, this is how 3D can give you an added value to your uh, diagnosis. This is again uh, the uh, mesh view, which again shows the only the apical region, which is dyskinetic. Now, this is a patient of global hypokinesia. This is a patient of DCM. And you see what was I was mentioning earlier, that the disparity in the volume curves can suggest that these patients can benefit with a CRT. I have already covered the mitral stenosis. I'll uh, go on to the various uh, causes of mitral regurgitation. This is a patient who uh, we thought, uh, looking at the grayscale, looked like a PML prolapse. But uh, look at the uh, 3D image, and you see in the posterior leaflet a distinct perforation there. Possibly had an endocarditis in the past and uh, had a perforation of the PML which uh, gives rise to the uh, MR. You see two patterns of MR here, one which is central and the other one in the middle of the PML. This is another patient where uh, you see the typical uh, myxomatous mitral valve uh, prolapse. Here you see uh, uh, what uh, from the grayscale you think is the P2 uh, scallop prolapse. But look at what the 3D shows. It shows a very thickened uh, mitral valve, the posterior mitral leaflet, the P2 scallop. This is P1, P2, P3. That's how we label it. And uh, you see the P2 scallop. It's, it is very bulky. And uh, this kind of information is very, very essential for the surgeon because he can decide on a simple anuloplasty ring or whether he needs to resect the mitral, uh, uh, the scallop and uh, make a planar resection and the type of approach of repair is very essential. Now this is a patient who has very obviously multiple uh, leaflet prolapse, but look at the 3D. The amount of information, look, every scallop here is prolapsing. Now you send this patient for a mitral valve repair, it's going to fail. So when you have this kind of information, you are in a position to tell the patient, look, your valve is not feasible for repair. Even the best of centers simply accept the fact that you're going in for a mitral valve uh, replacement. Now this is a patient who has a mitral regurgitation. This patient was referred as a more severe mitral regurgitation. In, with TE, we found that the grayscale imaging suggested that there's only a moderate. Now what is the cause for MR? Are here. The valve leaflet itself appears quite normal, but look at the uh, 2D pictures, 3D pictures. You see a number of clefts between the P1 and P2 scallop and the P2 and P3 scallop and a lot of indentations. Now this is being increasingly recognized with the use of 3D. The difference between indentation and cleft is that the cleft goes right up to the base of the leaflet, whereas an indentation goes only up to 50% of the leaflet uh, breadth. So this is important because it again gives a surgeon a good amount of uh, pre-operative indication as to what his approach is going to be. Now, we now move on to the uh, prosthetic valves. This is a patient who was diagnosed to have a severe uh, gradient across the mitral valve. Now, we did the uh, 3DTE, and you find both the leaflets, this is a bileaflet mechanical uh, valve, you find that both the leaflets are moving well, even here. Then what is this cause for the increased gradient? Once you have this kind of information, there's no panels, there's no clot on the 3DTE. Once you have this kind of information, you can surmise that possibly the valve is small for a, and we are dealing with a patient prosthetic mismatch. Now, this is another patient who had a uh, attic valve replacement. He also had very high gradients. Gradients were of more than 95. Now, what is the cause for the uh, severe attic uh, stenosis here? Now, look at the uh, 3D picture. You find that one of the leaflet is moving very sluggishly. Unfortunately, sometimes you cannot see the leaflets very clearly with 2D uh, TE in, uh, as far as aortic valve is concerned. But if you look at it, there's a lot of panels here, and there's panels which is encroaching upon one of the leaflets, resulting sluggish movement and resulting in severe obstruction. This is a patient with a bileaflet at a mitral valve with one leaflet completely closed. It's not opening at all. Patient 
underwent a thrombolytic th therapy, despite which one leaflet did not open. And you see here, this leaflet is opening very well. But look at this leaflet. In both these pictures, you can clearly make out a lot of haziness and a density here, which suggests that there is a, a large layered thrombus here. If you look at the two, uh, 2D picture here, you will find a few mobile elements, which also go, uh, goes to say that the patient is possibly having a large thrombus on the valve. So this patient was subsequently sent for surgery after the 3D pictures. Now this is an example of the, uh, one of the earliest cases that we had of a large paravalvar MR. Look at the MR here, it's arising from outside the uh, leaflet area and there's a large crescentic uh, thing. At that time we sent him back for surgery thinking that it cannot be uh, suitable for device closure but these kind of defects are now being at, uh, closed with devices. They are using multiple devices and closing the paravalvar leak. So, this is another patient with multiple paravalvular leaks and if you see the 3D pictures, you find that there is a uh, leak, uh, there is an opening here, there is an opening here both anteriorly and posteriorly. So 3D in a nutshell gives you extra information which 2D cannot in these cases. Now I'll skip the tricuspid valve because it's notorious, very difficult to get good pictures even on 3D of the tricuspid valve but this is one patient uh, where we did get some idea of what the, sorry, it's not playing. We'll move on. I've got some better. This is a patient of LV aneurysm with MR. Looking at the 2D image, you find that you are not able to pick up the uh, aneurysm very clearly. But look at the 3D pictures, transphoracic 3D in this patient. And you find that there is a big aneurysm here. And you will see that uh, in this view also. You see that there is a big aneurysm. And that is pulling the annulus away, resulting in severe mitral regurgitation. So this is an example of a transphoracic 3D, which is giving you extra information, which your 2D uh, did not quite come, uh, adequately pick up. Now an example of aortic valve, this is a corticuspid valve. Better, uh, not that you miss it in 2D, uh, 2D TE, but the 3D images are even more uh, clear. This is a patient of a bicuspid aortic valve. Again, the 3D pictures are very, very good. This is something that I had very recently. This is a patient of a mass in the uh, mitral annular region. Looking, I, I tried to get the idea of where the mass is arising from, from the tra translative jelleco. But despite rotating the entire gamut of the TE angles, I still could not. But look at the uh, 3D pictures. You are able to clearly see that it's arising from the base of the ML, most probably from the annulus because the valve leaflet itself is based on the PML. The valve leaflet itself is very clearly seen. This is a view in which this is the atrial septum. And you are seeing the septum, it's not arising from the septum, making it very unlikely that this is a left atrial myxoma. Also, from the 3D picture, you very clearly show and see that it's a very well encapsulated uh, mass. I still don't have a diagnosis of this. I thought it could be a fibroma or it could be a tubercloma. We have seen cases like this where we have proved tuberculosis and treated the patient with uh, resolution of the mass. So thank you once more. I, uh, this is one more last case. This is a patient of uh, aortic valve replacement who had an endocarditis immediately or post-operatively. Look at this. There is a perforation in the mitral leaflet and uh, there's a large vegetation which you see in 3D also. But what you see in 3D is that you can make out the perforation in the mitral leaflet also. So with this, I'll close. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to uh, talk to you again. Uh, I'm very sorry about the problems, the technical problems I had initially. Thanks a lot. Uh, this one last slide, please. I'm sorry. This uh, is to this is a bioprostatic valve which had become uh, degenerated and uh, very severely obstructive. So this is our own case. We did a uh, uh, transmital uh, replacement. Here you see the catheter with the valve loaded and ready to be implanted once we got the position right. And this is the post-operative 3D, uh, post-positioning uh, 3D, where you see the next uh, valve with the normal leaflets working wonderfully well. Thank you very much. Thank you.